I'm Mary Perry. Hi, everybody. I'm David Zen. We are unscripted. <laughs> yes, we are. Oh, my gosh. Well, good morning to you, Mr. David Zen. Good morning to you. Do you know what month is the shortest month? Well, since we're in May, I will say May. It is May. Do you know why? You don't, do you? Because it only has three letters. Oh, well, that's good. I was going to say because May only started yesterday. And uh, we actually went all the way through April 41st by my calculations. So. What? That's a boomerang comment. I don't even know what that means. Well, it felt like April for the first week or so of May. Oh, I got there you. Were like 41 days in April, you know? Got it. It was and long. Clouds and showers. You know, those April showers, uh, now the May flowers can start their thing. Yeah, that is so true. Um, does February, you think February? No, that's, never mind. That's not even funny. <laughs> Well, then. It's not funny, but I'm laughing. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Good, good, good. Well, well, well. What do we have going on at Dear St. Paul's this week? Well, what do we have going on at St. Paul's? This week? <coughs> that's kind of a unique thing. Let's talk about that. So we have Alpha that's going on. We do. Alpha Saturday. Alpha's having their big weekend, which is basically a big Saturday. Yep. What happens with the Alpha course on Saturday? Uh, so what we do is we have three or four teachings and, you know, we have a breakfast and a lunch and it's really all about all things about the Holy Spirit. So it's a very focused in conversation in terms of topics and um, it's a wonderful time to ask questions and come and explore exactly who is the Holy Spirit and who is he in your life. Okay. Oh, very fruitful weekend. Yes. Get it, get it, get it, fruits of the spirit. Yes. Oh, I don't even know if you meant that, but look at me picking up and making comments out of things well, that you say. Chalk one up from my side of the screen, I guess. Yeah, I think that'll go over on your side. So, uh, I was thinking driving in today. Yeah. Uh-oh. Two years ago when we did Alpha, we got right to about this point. I think we did the weekend and then... Right. COVID hit and everything kind of came to a screeching halt. That was the last. Yep. That's exactly right. So now it's going to be going to uh, mid June into new territory, for, into new territory videos with, not seen yet will be happening good. soon. I know it's, it's been great. And it's been just a wonderful, wonderful turnout. It's been a great mix of, of people for the first time, people that are finishing it up and, um, it's been so good. It really has just so many good conversations out of it. Super easy. People are talkative, looking to be together. So it's been wonderful. And the meals have been great. You know, so it's all good. The kitchen help, the kitchen help, Dave. Dave, can we talk about the, the wonderful people that are serving us from the kitchen? Actually putting it all together out there serving us. They are wonderful people. Well, they are. They also happen to be big fans of Unscripted. So. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize that. Oh, I it's, forgot. Oh, my. Of course. Oh, I forgot. We're all huge fans of Unscripted. So we have uh, them all a shout out. We got Ian. Yep. And the Human Laugh Track. Yes. The Human Laugh uh, Track. We have Kathy DeSanti, who's probably our number one fan, at least in the workplace. And then yep. Paula Asper's a big work fan. Absolutely. Unscripted fan. Yep. And Pam, who phones it in. And yes, she calls in the orders. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure everyone's uh, doing things correctly. So there's no surprise there. Mm -mm. Yeah. And all wrapped up in a great here. organization by Chris Goodman, and it is a good, smooth running machine. Well oiled machine. Yes, well oiled machine. And then, so that's. Uh, Gets us through Saturday, and then on Sunday, uh, Peter Scalzo will be with us. Oh, yeah. 
friend of the parish. He uh, grew up in St. Paul's, was served as an acolyte, and, and really kind of broke his teeth with us. And uh, he has preached uh, from our pulpit before, and many people know his story, but he's been on a 17 year cancer journey. Yeah. And he's written a book about it, and and he'll be talking about how that and how it's affected his life and his uh, spirituality. It's just a, a wonderful, faith-filled, spirit-filled person. He really yes. is. So looking forward to that. Is he, is he preaching at both services? Yes, he will be. Yeah, great. And then, really, the following week, is this a... Uh, this, this is a food collection week coming up. So on Wednesday, the 18th, Yep. we've done the food collection again. And then next Saturday is the election for convention. Well, the yep. convention for electing a new bishop. And that's still in person as of now. Is that true? Is that correct? Yes. But they've been going in the wrong direction. If you ask me, I'm not. Uh, so who knows what will happen there. Yeah. The voting will take place electronically and it's all private. So basically what happens with the voting are five candidates right now. And to elect a bishop, you need clergy as a group. You need to get 50% of the clergy group. And you also need to get 50% of the lay uh, delegates. So it's kind of like the House and the Senate, right? yep. the clergy and the lay people. And you need to get a majority of both of them. Yep. Yep. So you'll probably be hearing some more of that as uh, we move on. Absolutely. And it's it, for those that don't know, it, it's it's really quite a process. I mean, they've they've been working on this basically since Bishop Ian re announced his retirement. And uh, there's committees that have formed and, you know, really crafted the time to take a look at what, you know, the diocese is looking for and applications and candidates and screening and vetting. And so it's a lot. And those um, walk, the, those meetings are, when is, what is on those meetings? Those are this week, right? Is there one? Well, Saturday? they've been going on, uh, I think it's like every other night this week. There's one tomorrow night for the Northwest region. Right. Uh, it's all online at this point. Yeah, it's on Zoom. And where can they find the link? Do, do we have that somewhere? Uh, I do not have it available in Sword Points, but if you go to the uh, uh, Episcopal Church in Connecticut website, which is our Assassin website, there will be links there. Yeah, yep. It's easy enough to find it there. Yep. And if anybody has a question, they can ask, ask you or Father Joe or someone. One of the delegates. Yeah. Very interesting. Kathy time. Schroll are in uh, Tanzania. <laughs> yep. And Bill has been updating his blog on a pretty uh, regular basis. So, yeah. at points, you'll see his most recent, recent blog. And there's a link to his other blogs. Definitely take a look at it. First of all, keep them in your prayers, please, as they travel about doing God's work in the kingdom. And second of all, please check out their blogs. They, Bill is a great writer, and they do a wonderful job of bringing it to life what their experiences are. So, And we all go with them when they travel, right? So um, it's wonderful. So as I'm kind of glancing through sword points here, mm -hmm. uh, if you enjoyed uh, Father Joe's sermon last week, uh, we've got a little piece in here kind of dig into the quote from Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. And that whole story, uh, it's spelled out in a, a blog that the first part is printed out in sword points with a really comprehensive uh, article that goes with it about his relationship with clergy in general. Uh, it was, he was developing as a politician and even in his uh, term as president. You know, that is absolutely amazing. You know, I, I know you do a great job of, of taking that and going deeper into it, a true newspaper person at heart. 
Um, that, that is a wonderful little piece. I would ask everybody to take a quick look at that in Sword Point. Cause... You know, when Father Joe relayed the story, he said that Lincoln uh, read the, uh, basically just recited the 23rd Psalm to her. Mm -hmm. But he also read a portion of the Gospel of John. Mm. And uh, he concluded with uh, a recitation of the words of the hymn Rock of Ages. Mm. It was more than just spouting off kind of a rote uh, psalm that he knew. So it was a little amazing. So, and that, that was a very interesting story. It, it, it really I don't know was. if you read the whole thing, but I did. I did. It's well I worth was... the read. Well worth the read. I thought it was um, amazing. And just the, the way that, that Father Joe had wrapped it up into the sermon about, you know, heaven meeting earth, it was, it was extraordinary. So uh, that was great. It, it was a beautiful sermon and it was just a, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. And then so you looking, take it a step further. So I love that. Yeah, so looking a little further ahead, we have a blood drive on June 4th. Yep. And the there are signs around the church where you can uh, scan the code and sign up. Uh, yep. And there's a link in sword points. You can scan that code and sign up. Make it pretty easy. The Memorial Day outreach coming up. That's the uh, Sunday all. of the month, which is the 29th. Yep, free for all. Patrick That's needs donations and help to pull that off. It is so much fun. If you have not partake of that yet at St. Paul's, please, please do so. The whole parish is out there and we just welcome the entire town of Brookfield and so many others just into our home is really what it's about. Actually to, ex to explain that we tend to forget, you know, we think these things happen every year, but it really hasn't happened for no. probably three years now, I don't know. So pandemic and then rain, I think it was rain, so, pandemic, rain, something like that. So, so what happened, uh, so what happens for the, on the Memorial Day outreach? We have a parade in town and it starts up at the high school and comes through the center of town, right down Main, uh, Wiskineer Road in front of the church. So it's right by our door. Down by Center School, or St. Joe's Church down in that area. And what we do on our front lawn, it's, we call it a free-for-all, uh, kind of a picnic, whatever. We have a, some kind of bouncy house, air inflated slide for kids. We have all kinds of free food from hot dogs, hamburgers. We got the grill out there going and uh, water and cookies and all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah. I've seen cotton candy there in the past. Mm -hmm. Slushy, people ice. sitting all over our front lawn watching the parade is just a great thing and it doesn't cost anyone anything nope not a thing not a thing we have our prayer tent our prayer tent will be out there and the prayer tent, yes yeah so we do offer prayer for anybody who wants it and those that don't even know that they want it <laughs> so uh the uh it's a, it's it's so much fun it's one of my favorite outreaches of the entire year so we pray for good weather and that it all goes off safely, but do help. You can do anything from bringing a case of water or a box of cookies, um, but definitely try to come and, and help and hand out. You will feel so much joy handing out to the community because they're really so grateful. I mean, a free hot dog and water and a snack, you know, for family is, is a good deal. And um, we, they, it's just, it's absolutely great. There's usually music and stuff. Like yes, please come. Please come partake, be part of it. So much good. Well, it's so. Uh, so you have nothing. Your uh, script writers are totally on vacation. Is that it? Yeah, so it's, it's a busy, busy time of year. And believe it or not, I just not sure where my joke book is. <laughs> wow. What can I help you with? Uh, can you help me with anything? Well, you know, it's spring and, uh, you know, well, there's a lot of pollen in the air. I yeah. learned something the other day that I thought was very unusual. Did you know that bees are actually allergic to pollen? No. Are they? Yeah, they, they develop hives. That 
right now, Kathy's somewhere. I think Dorothy's over in her <laughs> office. The falling in laughter. That one. Soundtrack, please. Soundtrack. That was so good. You know what a baker's favorite kind of garden is, speaking of spring? <laughs> it, a flower garden. <laughs> flower garden. A flower garden. Do you know why the farmer planted his seeds in a pond? I'm sure you don't. Because he's trying to grow a watermelon. Yeah. Jim, come back. Jim, come yes. back. Jim, 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 hello. Hello, Jim, hello. <laughs> All right. right. This will make him, this will bring him back. You ready for this? What is an herb garden's favorite singer? <laughs> <laughs> Elvis Parsley. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. We fell right off your chair there, huh? Oh my God. I'm cracking myself up. Okay. <laughs> Get it? Elvis Parsley. Elvis Parsley. Oh. No matter how you parse that, it's, <laughs> it's you just you just you just can't. It's, it's, it's still a book joke, okay? Yeah, still, yeah, yeah. Okay, moving on. So I, I do want to give a little shout out to Bob Pacheco. My sweet, yes. Who was who was at church last Sunday, and that's after uh, <clears throat> he had had a heart attack eight days before out in Hawaii. So he had two stents and was able to fly back and joined us on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that were there at 1030, now you heard him talk and uh, give thanks. And uh, I saw him at coffee hour afterwards and I said, next time uh, when you speak to the congregation, please put a little emotion. Into it. <laughs> but it was great to see him. Great. It was great. And it, it just is such a reminder of the things that make St. Paul special is that we are a family. And when one is hurt, we're all hurt. And when one cries, we all cry and we rejoice. One rejoices, we rejoice at all. So we are all connected. So um, wonderful and grateful to God for bringing he and Helen back home. So uh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. That's a great acknowledgement. Yep, so good. What about the readings? There, Mr. What Dave. about the readings? What about them? We have readings this week. We do have readings. We do have readings this week. Yes. Uh, the first reading is from the book of Acts, and this is of Peter, who is still in Jaffa. And uh, I believe he's still staying at uh, Simon the Tanner's house, which is kind of interesting because a tanner was really about as unclean a person I Jewish mm. could get because they were dealing with animals and skin mm. and, and stuff. Um, Peter has his heavenly vision of the sheets coming down with all the, the quote, unclean animals on him. Mm. And God has to tell him three times uh, what God has... Uh, God is made, you know, you should not consider as unclean. Yeah. And uh, let's see as we go on. Uh, this, uh, the story in John and the gospel is really the new commandment from Jesus is that the disciples should love one another. And basically that's how you show other people That you're his disciples by how you love people, and that I kind of like the uh, what is the, I don't even, what, the coffee with Jesus cartoon this week? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Which is a classic. I don't know if we've used it before. I don't think so. Even oh. Here it is. Uh, the one character I think his name is Carl. He's the uh, he's a landscaper. Yep. And he asked Jesus. You know, should I add that little fish uh, symbol to the corner of my landscaping company logo? And Jesus says, what end? why should you do that? 
And the landscaper, Carl, says, well, so people know that they're dealing with a Christian company. And Jesus says, why don't we just leave that logo off? And let's say if they can figure out by your workmanship, your work ethic, and your honesty instead, we would come to some help. Oh. That kind of sums up our gospel, I guess. For it 100% does. 100%. I thought that was absolutely wonderful. It sums up everything. Don't have to do all of this. Just do that. So good. So good. How about that, Carl? So you want to, I'll give you a little story to wrap this up here. Okay. I think you'll approve of this, but then... <sighs> So this is going to be a partial disclaimer, okay? Unheard, I'm not sure. Whenever he says that, it's at least a watch. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so a priest and a taxi driver die. Okay. They both go to heaven. St. Peter's standing there at the pearly gates waiting for him. St. Peter's grabs the taxi driver and says, come with me. So he takes him along and uh, he takes him to this humongous mansion. Everything you can imagine. It's got a bowling alley, Olympic-sized pool. The taxi driver's, my Lord, thank you. This is this is like just awesome. So next, the St. Peter's takes the priest. He takes him to a little old wooden shack that's fallen down with a bunk bed and an old television set. And uh, the priest is like a little, you know, perplexed. He says to St. Peter, says, "Isn't there some kind of mix-up? Isn't?" Shouldn't I be the one getting the mansion? After all, I was a priest. I went to church every day and I preached God's words. St. Peter says, yeah, that's true. But during your sermons, people slept. When the taxi driver drove, everyone prayed. <laughs> I'm gonna give it up. Mm, okay. <laughs> Only because the tax driver part was fun. Oh, it's so and, good. And it's not about our priest. It's not about Father Joe. It's, not. It's a joke. Him. It's a it's joke. <laughs> Everyone get a life. Humor is... Someone's always going to be an out of shape. <laughs> get it? The taxi driver, everybody prayed. That is a true story. Yes. For sure. That's good. All right. So everyone have a blessed rest of the week, and we'll see you on Sunday. See you on Sunday, everyone. Bye. Be blessed. And good luck finding your joke. <laughs>